So I I guess we have a, a very special guest of honor today. Well, maybe you want to elaborate more on that. With us today to officiate our program this morning on this preliminary session is Mr. Stephen Priestner. He is the UN resident coordinator for Malaysia, Singapore, and Brunei, with vast experience in international development and management issues since 1996. He also has done a lot of policy advising to governments, including countries in Asia Pacific and Eastern Europe. These countries include Bangladesh, Bhutan, Nepal, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Trinidad and Tobago, and Uzbekistan. He has two Masters of Arts. The first one is in, of Arts in International Relations from John Hopkins University, and also a Masters in Law from University of Vienna. Ladies and gentlemen, let us hear the opening speech by Mr. Mr. St Mr. Stefan Prisner. Yeah. Such a pleasure to be uh, here this morning and address uh, this Community Builder Summit. Dr. Dr. Mohammed Daud Bakar, the president of the International Islamic University, Malaysia participants of civil society organizations, all of those of you who dial into this important event, dear friends, I'd like to start by congratulating, uh, you know, the coalition that is behind this important event, the International Islamic University Malaysia, Philandur, and Launch Good for organizing this event. I was very happy to be invited originally for April, uh, when you first planned this event, and it was still planned as a physical event. And I would like to say that it's a major achievement to uh, organize this event in the context of the new normal, um, you know, when it is not possible to meet all of you face to face, but uh, where nevertheless uh, important uh, capacity building activities are imparted, uh, you know, uh, in a virtual way. So congrats and thanks for everybody who has behi been behind the organization of this summit. I also think it's uh, very significant that universities and civil societies are collaborating together to promote the sustainable development goals. Having been, uh, having had the honor of being appointed to Malaysia for the next, uh, for the last three years, I have had the pleasure to work with uh, the SDG Alliance, uh, among many others, uh, other civil society organizations and, and coalitions, but also with the SDG Academic Network. And uh, I very much uh, uh, recognize, and I think it's recognized globally, how important it is that academia and uh, uh, civil society engages in a robust way with uh, the Sustainable Development Goals. We all know the importance of civil society organizations and civil society actions. You are part of the, what I would call the magic glue to hold societies together, making nations functional and vibrant and accountable to the commitments across the economic, social and environmental dimensions of sustainable development. And I really liked at the very start when uh, the moderators explained their definition of community builders. I talked about the glue of society, and I think that's what community builders are. The government obviously will provide policies and will provide funding and will provide a lot of services, but these services are incomplete unless community builders help to complement them with bottom-up, on-the-ground actions. Now, civil society is also incredibly important for the United Nations. I have myself the honor of coordinating 19 United Nations agencies in Malaysia, Singapore, and Brunei. And in the UN, we often talk about the three United Nations. The United Nations of the member states, the United Nations of the organizations of which I am uh, a representative, and very important, the United Nations of the civil society. And this United Nations of civil society has huge influence on the direction, on the values, 
and on the effectiveness of the United Nations. So civil society is also really collaborating on a global level to influence the direction the United Nations is going, uh, but also the delivery of what we are doing on the ground. Now, since this summit links civil society action with the Sustainable Development Goals, I think it is important to remind everybody about the core of what the Sustainable Development Goals are. I know that most of you know this, but uh, <coughs> it is important to stress that this is the biggest vision that we have from 2015 to 2030. And it is a vision that was unanimously endorsed by all member states of the United Nations. All 193 member states of the United Nations endorsed the SDG vision. And that's why I would like to quote from the Sustainable Development Goals, um, because I think it's a, such a beautiful vision that has been kind of agreed globally. I quote, in these goals and targets, we are setting out a supremely ambitious and transformational vision. We resolve between now and 2030 to end poverty and hunger everywhere, to combat inequalities within and among countries, to build peaceful, just and inclusive societies, to protect human rights and promote gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls, and to ensure the lasting protection of the planet and its natural resources. We resolve also to create conditions for sustainable, inclusive and sustained growth, shared prosperity and decent work for all, taking into account different levels of national development and capacities. So this vision is so comprehensive. It focuses, of course, on economic development, we acknowledge that economic development is the driver of development, but it equally looks at social inclusion and environmental protection, looks at inequalities, at rights and at peaceful societies. So the SDGs are the most compelling and most comprehensive response to the biggest challenges we face today. We need an economic paradigm shift which takes into account social and environmental dimensions that were so far only seen as externalities. And there is an urgent call to leave no one behind. And that makes, I think, the SDGs so uh, ambitious because there, you know, broadly many nations in the world go ahead in terms of development, but very often certain groups are left out. Therefore, the call to leave no one behind. It also asks us to look much more seriously at our vulnerable planet than we have done so far. Those of you who know the Millennium Development Goals, which were the uh, global vision for the last 15 years between 2000 and 2015, there was one goal on environment. Now we have of 17 goals, seven goals focusing on environment. And the reason is that we have developed with many success stories. We are today older than we ever have become in average. We have a higher income than any generation before us. And we have a higher educational standard. But all of this, unfortunately, also impacted on the environment. And we have today uh, an environment impact that goes until that everybody knows the last corner of this world, whether it's the Antarctica or the deepest uh, parts of the global oceans, you will have plastic pollution, you will have pesticide pollution, you will have potentially also over fertilizing. That is why the call for environmental sustainability, focusing on the issues of climate change, biodiversity protection, above in land and in, in, in water is a very, very important part of the Sustainable Development Goals. So we, the United Nations, and everybody that works towards the SDGs recognize that this environmental repair agenda 
needs to be looked at in a much more robust way, in a systemic way, not always at the back end to repair what we have already kind of uh, destroyed. The other reason why the SDGs, I think, are so powerful is that it's a universal agenda. It's an agenda for every country in the world, whether these are highly developed countries or whether these are least developed countries. Obviously, the priorities may be slightly different from country to country, but the overall agenda is the same. No country in the world can say that they have solved the issue of inequality. No country in the world can yet say that they have solved the issue of climate change. And that's why it's countries such as Sweden and Norway, which are maybe ahead of the curve in many ways, as well as small island states or sub-Saharan African developing states, and of course Malaysia, which is somewhere in the middle, that needs to take the SDGs equally seriously. And then at the beginning of this year, the message of the Secretary General was, yes, progress has been made, but progress is too slow. We need to accelerate progress. And he has called for a decade of action. But as we all know, very shortly after the beginning of this year, a catastrophic uh, incident happened, and that was COVID-19, the crisis that has set back the achievement of development goals in a very significant way. And now we have to do double focused work to catch up. We believe we can still do it and we can still build back better. And there I would like to really bring in the role of the civil society and academia, which uh, uh, I have an absolutely essential role to uh, achieve the uh, sustainable development goals. And I really like the fact that uh, this uh, uh, summit uh, distinguishes between several clusters of, of, of civil society organizations, such as humanitarian organizations, such as community development, youth organizations, animal and nature, environmental protection organizations, and social enterprises. All of these categories of civil society organizations have a very important role to play to help uh, the country and the globe to achieve the SDGs. Now, a few words on Malaysia. Malaysia has done a lot right in its development path, uh, building on a track record to reduce poverty and foster improved access to public services. Uh, if we compare I mean, Malaysia with other countries, Malaysia has had a, a very rapid uh, kind of rollout of educational health services has reduced poverty quite fast. But the point here is that the sustainable development goals, as I already mentioned, make all countries developing nations to a certain extent. And therefore, there needs to be a renewed impetus to look at many different issues. And Malaysia experiences these challenges like any other nation especially in the context of COVID-19 and its catastrophic economic and social consequences. So a few points on uh, the SDG achievements in Malaysia. The overall picture, I think, is very similar to the rest of the world. Progress is being made, but it needs to be accelerated. And there is uneven progress between different sustainable development goals. Broadly, the social set of goals, education, health, uh, access to water and sanitation uh, is further ahead, but still not quite on target uh, than the environmental side of the uh, goals. I think if you look at the achievement of all the goals globally, climate change is probably the one that is the most complex one, the one most behind, and also goal 14 and 15, biodiversity. We, in the meantime, know very well how to address climate change. We have to just reduce carbon emissions. But unfortunately, we don't yet fully understand, you know, what our impact on biodiversity is. Because biodiversity is so uh, networked, one species relying on other species, that 
uh, it may have catastrophic domino effects. The infringement of unfettered economic development on the environment. Just think about the fact that uh, in some parts of the world, bees, bees, the most natural, uh, you know, uh, uh, creature, are extinct or, or almost extinct, and this has catastrophic impacts of the pollination of different plants, and therefore uh, there is a huge impact on extinction of species. At the moment, we are talking about thousand times as fast extinction of species than uh, in a, let's say, natural kind of uh, state of uh, things. So um, I also would like to say here that uh, as the head of the United Nations, I am uh, happy to state that uh, we are closely collaborating with the Malaysian government. The Malaysian government is doing a lot on SDGs. They are having uh, aligned their planning and budgeting with the Sustainable Development Goals. But the vibrancy and the engagement of civil society is key. We require your work, we require your support for the achievement of SDGs at all levels, be it in knowledge creation, in analysis, in advocacy back to the government or in action on the ground. Uh, CSOs, civil society organizations, are in many ways uh, very well positioned to deliver services to certain disadvantaged groups, vulnerable groups. And uh, again, I mean, I think this uh, summit will go a long way to empower civil society uh, to do this. I want to end by uh, proposing three areas where the UN kind of and civil society works together um, the, with the community builders. One is the direction of uh, um, uh, sustainable development goals in Malaysia. We are currently uh, embarking on an exercise called the SDG Roadmap, which further kind of supports the 12th Malaysia plan in terms of uh, SDG achievement by clearly pointing out the gaps and challenges on each of the sustainable development goals. And uh, this will be done together with civil society participation because the knowledge of civil society is, is key. Secondly, resources. Very often civil societies have a, a, a challenge to raise resources to really kind of uh, provide the action that is necessary, provide the support that is necessary. And the government and the UN are currently setting up a Malaysia SDG fund that will also work with civil society to fund specific targeted initiatives to take SDGs forward. And finally, capacity. Capacity is key for uh, the civil society organizations and for community builders. And I'd like to commend once again this summit to have a mix of expert speakers, but also of practical trainings that will go a long way to build the capacity of uh, community builders to play a decisive role, an important role in taking forward the sustainable development goals. I thank you once again for having me. It's very nice to meet you, if only virtually. Next time, hopefully, face to face. And it's so nice to be here. Thank you very much.
All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Stephen Presner, for a very remarkable uh, speech. And I believe lots of information that we can get from his speech. Uh, one of those would be uh, on how Malaysia's uh, uh, achievements so far, especially for the SDG. So I did um, remember he said um, we are on track um, in terms of the education goals and also health. So that's the two areas that Malaysia really progressing on the right track, but has yet to achieve the target. So that's that's a, a very um, a very uh, remarkable. I mean, this is a, a call for achievement. achievement for for the community builders. So let's work harder so that we can achieve what has been targeted so far. So just a bit of a uh, background for those who, of you who just joined us today. So we are here uh, at the opening ceremony for the Global Community Builders Summit 2020. So GLOBS actually supposed to be held in, back in April this year. However, due to the pandemic, um, it has been postponed and now we are back, but it is on virtual platform. So thank you once again, everybody that supports us to make this happen and um, to add on that uh, especially on SDG so SDG is it's not a new jargon actually it's a continuation of the MDG so they actually expanded more uh, more focus more clear target so especially for the community builders uh, they can use SDG as their guideline their parameter to work uh, within uh, what uh, what can really what they can do to help the community in a more structured and impactful way. Thank you, Nuru, for highlighting on on that matter. It, it just gives such uh, appreciation to us here at Globes to Mr. Stefan Priestner, as he mentioned, being patient for, since April, uh, right to this moment here, here in November. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I believe you out there also are very very much uh, anticipated for this event, for this auspicious event. And as he had mentioned just now, each and every one of us, you and me, have a very critical role to play. We are the glue to the society. We are the ones who make things happen. Yes. We, don't, we can't wait only for the government yes. who gives the resources, nor the private to push and initiate. But we, the society, especially from down up, we must actually make things happen. And I believe by playing our role, this will accelerate, yes. will assist Malaysia to catch up, Yep. And as what Mr. Stefan has mentioned, we really need to start to ensure that the issues on climate change, impact on biodiversity can be done. And he has mentioned in, in, in short, the three summarized things which United Nations can assist. Mm -hmm. Number one, they have the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals Roadmap. Yeah. Basically, the CSOs will just have to follow and implement, yeah. adjust according to what are their plans. It, it's in support with the 12th Malaysia Plan as exactly. well. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, they have the resources. Uh, don't worry. I know normally CSOs out there. Not buat kerja, duit tak ada. Right, Nurul? So, this is something that you can actually start to think about and connect and network here in this uh, seven days program. Yep. And last but not least, capacity building. We're even starting it right now. Yes. Dr. Dr. Daud Baka had mentioned just now, trying to build a ship while you are swimming. Yes. Almost impossible, right? <laughs> but that can be done.